there they go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to RacingDudes.com. Today I had a little bit of a video I want to share with you, just kind of documenting not, not Rich Strike winning the Kentucky Derby, but how he even got there is really pretty incredible. Uh, of course, he needed some late defections uh, to get into the race, and I'll talk about that after I'm kind of done with his full kind of story of how he was able to qualify for the Derby in the first place. Uh, it, it really is just quite amazing. And it's the more kind of that I look into this horse and think about what happened and can really process what's happened, uh, you know, two, three days after seeing it, it's, it's, it just becomes more unbelievable, uh, as I look at it. So I'll pull up his past performances here, or at least his, uh, running lines. And it all started with the second race uh, of his career on, uh, September 17th of 2021. He ran in a maiden claiming race at Churchill Downs for $30,000. It was claimed uh, out of the race. And if he doesn't get claimed out of that race, who knows what the story would have been. Every owner, every trainer might have different ideas about what to do with him. He won that race by 17 links, but you never know that if he hadn't gotten claimed, the, the, the old owners and, and Joe Sharp, the old trainer, what path could it have been? Who knows, right? So the claim was the first thing. He was uh, claimed by Red TR Racing LLC. He was sent to Eric Reed, and immediately you could tell they kind of thought we're going to try to get this horse on some kind of path towards at least trying for the Kentucky Derby because they went from a maiden claiming to that allowance uh, optional claiming race at Keeneland. They ran third, and then they tried Kentucky Derby uh, you know, prep competition for the first time in the Gunrunner Stakes, which oddly enough he was defeated by uh, uh, Epicenter in that race, but he was fifth and he didn't earn any points. He went to Turthway to run in a stakes next. And he improved and he got third. And they thought he ran well enough, obviously, to try the John Battaglia uh, Memorial Stakes next. That was his first, or the first time, I should say, that he actually did earn Kentucky Derby points. He only earned one. He earned one point for finishing fourth in the John Battaglia. And you might say, well, why are you even talking about this? That one point made the difference from him getting in, even though he was on the also eligible list and he still needed scratches. And again, I'll get to that last part of it in a second. He was 21st and rattle and roll was 22nd. Well, if Rich Strike doesn't earn one point in the John Battaglia, they're both tied at 20 and rattle and roll would have won the tiebreaker and rattle and roll would have been 21 and Rich Strike would have been 22 and he would not have still gotten in the race so oddly enough, this one point in the John Battaglia was the difference in the end of him getting in the race. And you think of it like that, it's absolutely crazy. So I've got the John Battaglia pulled up and we'll kind of watch Rich Strike. Now he's the two horse, so make sure to keep your eyes on the two horse. There they break. And even though the rider absolutely wants him to go, Rich Strike has other plans. He says, I'm not going to go out there. I'm going to run in the back like I always do. And so... Um, it's interesting to see that he, he has the same tactics as, as normal, uh, even though it's a turf way. So again, <laughs> you might be saying, well, why are you showing this again? He finished fourth here. He got one point. If he finishes fifth, he's not in the Kentucky Derby last Saturday. And we're not talking about an 80 to one shot winning the race. So it's just quite just incredible is the really only way you could put it that this race was going to make the difference. Uh, him getting in or not. So uh, up the backside here, you can kind of see he's in his spot where you would, you know, he's, you now know that he likes to run before the race. You may have not even known how he liked to run. Uh, but yeah, he's in the back. Again, John Battaglia, uh, not really known for a huge producer of Kentucky Derby winners, but I guess it is now. So uh, they're starting to get in the turn. You see that he's getting ready to maybe make a move. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh boy, he's He's getting, you know, he's not really doing much. He's not doing a whole lot of running. Uh, here in just a second, they're going to go to the main shot, and he's completely out of the screen. You don't see him at all. Um, if you bet him at this point, you're like, I don't, I don't even know where this horse is. Oh, there he is. Here he comes. So he's starting to make his move now. And look, he has absolutely nowhere to go. He's inside of all these horses. He's only got two beat at this point. He's trying to weave himself in and out. He's trying, or not in and out. He's just trying to get position. He's trying to barrel his way through here. Uh, what a rough run race. Uh, not not the, the, the prettiest movers here for any of these horses. He still looks like, oh, no, he's, he might get fifth. But, oh, just at the end, that little bob, he gets by the eight horse and earns that one point. And I can't overstate it enough. 
If he doesn't do that, he's not in the race. So it's really incredible. Uh, I, I went too quick there. I'll pull up the chart. So he, like I said, three links behind, just like the eight was three links behind. I would call that about a head victory over the fifth place finisher erase. So if he doesn't get up and get that head victory for fourth over erase, who finishes fifth. We're not talking about this for us uh, for, for weeks like we're going to now. All right, I, I jumped ahead of myself, but obviously the next one is a big one, the Jeff Ruby stakes. Uh, and so this is where the horse earns 20 points for finishing third in the Jeff Ruby stakes. By the way, and I just thought of this, uh, I didn't have this in my notes, but I just thought of this. The Jeff Ruby stakes used to be worth uh, 50, 20, 10, and 5 in Kentucky Derby uh, points. And it was elevated only a couple years, maybe two or three years ago, to 140, 20, and 10. So the elevation of the Jeff Ruby stakes allowed this year's Kentucky Derby winner in the race. That's probably something that I've even argued against. I didn't think it should be worth that many points. So what do I know? I mean, that's another thing. I Like I said, literally just thought of this doing the video is, wow, the, the, the raise in points you can earn for the Jeff Ruby stakes uh, got this horse or helped get this horse in as well. All right, I'll play it here. Remember, he's the four horse this time, Jeff Ruby stakes. This also had Tiz the Bomb and Tani Port, uh, who finished 1-2, and obviously were in the Kentucky Derby. They finished 7th and ninth. so uh, Tani was 7th, and uh, uh, Tiz the Bomb was ninth. So uh, pretty good performances for them, I, 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 compared to their odds, at least. Uh, all right, so there you go. And again, Rich Strike is the four horse here. You can see him with the red blinkers on that have, I guess would now be called Famous. And once again, he is towards the back. He is second to last and, and doesn't look interested. So certainly a, a horse that's not going to show you a lot of early speed ever. So uh, once again, he's he's in last at the backside, second to last at the backside. And, you know, up to this point in his career, several people, many people, most people, I would say, they may not even know who this guy is. So uh, we're, we're up the backside here in the Jeff Ruby, and you can see a uh, eventual winner, Tis the bomb up here in about fifth in a really good position. Tiny Port kind of up there in decent position as well. Both kind of just tracking the leader. Tiny Port right there, the five. Tis the bomb, the seven, just kind of tracking this pace. So we uh, still have uh, no idea where Rich Strike is. He's not even on the screen here. This is the NBC feed, and they're just showing up front. Where is Rich Strike? Well, we don't know. All right, here comes Tis the bomb. He's going to make his move. And, uh, and then there's Tiny Port as well. Two horses, like said, they ran better than their odds indicated. Uh, any idea where Rich Strike is? No, we still don't know. He's still not in the picture. Remember, he has to finish third here or he wouldn't have qualified. Where is he? Anybody got a clue? Whoop, there he is. Here he comes up the rail. That looks familiar, doesn't it? All right, here he comes. He's off the rail now. He's back on it. He's kind of in between or in, in tight. Now they've got a little bit of room. The, the rail opened up for him. He's saving every bit of ground. Uh, you might be looking at this and go, how did he win the Derby? He's not really finishing that strongly here. No, he did finish strong. Here he goes. He's going to get by the nine. No threats to the top two. But Rich Strike comes up, gets third, and he is now uh, with 21 points. Now, he's still not in the Kentucky Derby. He sat in 24th after that race. Or, excuse me, 24th after all the preps, preps were over. Rich Strike was right there in 24th. So he needed a lot of defection. Well, he needed three defections, obviously. So uh, what happened? Morello was ahead of him. He dropped out almost immediately. Uh, in due time, he dropped out. So what was left? Early voting. The Monday of the draw, they said, we're not bringing him. It was widely speculated they weren't going to bring him anyway. But they didn't bring him. That set... Rich Strike at number 21. At Thrill Road, number 20, now. He's in, right? At number 20, at Thrill Road is in the race. Rich Strike sitting right there at 21. And what happens? At Thrill Road, at the last minute, on the last scratch time, scratches from the race. Leaving Rich Strike in at 21. Unbelievable. D. Wayne Lucas, a guy who will run almost any horse that's qualified in the Kentucky Derby, had to scratch to allow Rich Strike to enter the race. So it's really quite incredible when you look at it like that. 
his chances in magic did a video on, we did a, we did videos on each horse, each of the top 24 after those preps. And in magic's video, he said, you know, he has great distance pedigree, but who knows if he can get in the gate, even like it's improbable. I think is the word that he could even get in the gate. He makes it in the gate. Unbelievable. So it's improbable that he was going to get in. After running in a maiden claimer, it's improbable that you're going to be anywhere near the Kentucky Derby, and then he wins it at 80 to 1. So pretty cool to see uh, just how it happened there. And like I said, he was a head away from getting fifth in the John Battaglia, and we never would be talking about this horse, at least not this week. Maybe, maybe uh, he was getting ready to show us that no matter what race he was going to run in next. But it wouldn't. we wouldn't be talking about him this week because he would not have been in it. So quite incredible when you look at it like that. and. Uh, We'll see. The Preakness is going to be up next for him. We'll see if he can keep this improbable journey going. Uh, all I know is win or lose, he's not one we're ever going to forget. The probably, actually, no probably about it. This will be the biggest uh, surprise in our lifetime in the Kentucky Derby. So thanks, everybody, for watching. We will be back all week long and, and I guess the next two weeks with Preakness coverage. So don't go anywhere, and uh, we'll see you later. This has been a presentation of RacingDudes.com, your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels, never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.